Dr. Hafsa, I just wanted you to ground us today on how we're doing. I know that the Ministry of Health released a report recently, and perhaps for the purpose of our audience, can we look back at the state of mental health in Uganda? Talking about before when you talked about mental health, like Joseph has said, we were thinking about, you know, people walking on the streets, but it's different. Could you perhaps ground us on the state of mental health in Uganda, Dr. Hafsa? Yeah. It, it pains me when I sit in front of this big, big, big house and I don't have data. There's no data. Solomon, there's no data for mental health. We do not know how many people have depression. We do not know for certain, just like we know about HIV, as we know about malaria, as we know about TB, we do not know the actual figures in mental health. We are using estimates, we are using small, study, small studies to give us the prevalence. We are also using stories like Joseph has given and many others and those that we see in the communities in which we live. It's unfortunate. We need more funding for mental health. That said, however, we have tried to put together all the researches that have been done around mental health, the different mental health conditions. And uh, unfortunately, most of those studies we are not heterogeneous, when they say heterogeneous, meaning they were not the same, they were not done in the same way. So like you would just add up and say, okay, if we add one plus two, then that equals to three and so on. No. These were done in small, like small, small things. So we could not even like come up with the proper prevalence. However, we have a working figure. We have a working figure. For alcohol, we have found that 9.8% of the population, the adult population, actually have alcohol-related disorders. Like people are addicted, people have issues, they cannot function without taking alcohol. Or they are already derailed because they are taking alcohol. And we are seeing many of them in our communities. They are no longer functional. So 9.8% of them are having issues. Call it 10%, that is close to 10%. And unfortunately, 30% of our population actually are taking alcohol. There is depression. Depression, I think, is the biggest problem that we have in our community. We have about, they talk of between 19.5 to 20 percent of the population actually are suffering some form of depressive disorder. We have quite a number of Uganda psychiatrists who will tell you there are those that are mildly depressed, those that are moderate, and those that are severe. The ones that are severe are those that will not be able to do anything. They will stay home and, you know, like keep to themselves and do so many things. Mm -hmm. We are cooking mental Ill, illness somewhere there, or we are having those symptoms. Many of us are suffering, but we are keeping quiet. Anyway, the numbers are big, the numbers are many. Epilepsy, epilepsy, we've heard about epilepsy. They talk of 3% generally, but in some places like northern Uganda, it's up to 10%. We've been talking about nodding syndrome. Nodding syndrome is one of those epilepsy form conditions. So epilepsy, convulsions, most of us in this house here, have, had, have a relative who has epilepsy. Some are being treated, many are not. People are suffering with mild and moderate depression. You're having all the symptoms that fit into that diagnosis. You're not eating well, either you're eating a lot or less. You're not sleeping properly. You wake up so early in the morning, like nine, three o'clock. You can't sleep again when you wake up, like in the middle of the night, and so on plus all the signs and symptoms of depression that we know. So that's up to 25% of the population. 25, that is one in, one in four. Like how many of us are here? How many are here? If we are about 125 people here, how many tables are there? One, two, three, four. We could have the whole of this middle row already depressed. And one thing that I need to bring uh, to make sense out of all this is that once you have a mental health problem, you will not function properly. No wonder we are in the third world country 
I mean, we're failing to develop, and we are asking ourselves why anxiety is another point. Anxiety. People are suffering from anxiety. We are all worried about tomorrow, the next minute, we don't know. Now you see my child is sick. Now, now here my work. Hmm? We are cooking mental Ill, illness somewhere there. Or we are having those symptoms. Many of us are suffering, but we are keeping quiet. Anyway, the numbers are big. The numbers are many. Epilepsy. Epilepsy. We've heard about epilepsy. They talk of 3% generally, but in some places like northern Uganda, it's up to 10%. We've been talking about nodding syndrome. Nodding syndrome is one of those epileptiform conditions. So epilepsy, convulsions, most of us in this house here have, had, have a relative who has epilepsy. Some are being treated, many are not. And we don't keep the medication, so that person cannot even get better. So, and we're making it worse. If someone could have gotten better in, the, in like two years, someone cannot if they are not on their medication, if they are not following the medication properly. Unfortunately, I'm talking to the already converted, but anyway, I'm giving figures. That's people thought it was a cure for COVID or it was helping them to prevent COVID. And unfortunately, some of them are already hooked. Some are already hooked in there. Now they cannot sleep without taking a bit of it. And unfortunately, it is going to... Those hard drugs just destroy, physically they destroy them. So, what is the situation like? It is not good. Most of our taxi drivers and the border boarders were found to use it. The other group that I want to bring on board are the families. These are the people who are sick, but they're their families. As Joseph has clearly brought it out. The families, the close families, the spouses, the children, but then they are the parents as well. Most of our children are suffering on our behalf. When the father is not okay, when the mother is not okay, this child in school is not going to go to, I mean, is not going to pay attention to what they are teaching them. They have left mommy crying. They have left daddy not uh, worried or not being able to meet his, 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 his requirements at home. So it is everyone, the children, the whole life cycle, actually. The children, the adults, even the elderly. We are having conditions among us, the elderly. They've used drugs. They've used so many things. They have forgotten dementia. People are even, you know, like forgetting purposefully, like it's better yeah. to forget about your worries. Yeah. So thank you very much for that question. I could spend the whole day talking about mental illnesses in this country, but most importantly, I think I need to put figures to that, and I hope the hashtag continues. Let's increase funding for mental, for mental, for mental health so that we can be able to do certain things systematically. Thank you.